So now, now it's my turn. Let me introduce myself. So probably you know me already. I've been working with the deaf for around 20 years, doing research in sign language. And so I'd like to do a lecture. So, uh, so I, I've been a UP student. You know, I grew up here in UP, established an NGO called the Philippine Deaf Resource Center. <coughs> And so we've been looking at, you know, okay. So you may be wondering about FSL. You know, you've seen the four books, you've seen the series. So before World War II, you will see that um, sign language developing three waves. You have the first, the second, and the third. Um, the third, when the Peace Corps volunteers came, and now we're at the fourth wave where you have a global community. And so, before World War II, so you have this deaf group, the International Theater of Filipinas in 2004, who presented about the history of sign language here in the Philippines. And this happened in Leyte, Dula, many, many years ago, in 1596. We found in our sign language studies that, you know, People from Europe, I mean, priests, friars, so Jesuits actually, Latinian Jesuits, no? And we've seen in their archives that there are records of deaf people way, way back in the 1500s here in Leyte. And so from 1596, I mean, you may be wondering what has happened until 1900s. We don't really know what has happened around then. But we know that the Americans came in the 1900s. So you're probably aware of the Philippine School for the Deaf in Pasay. And so it's an old school in this photo. Um, you'd see those trees still um, there in the premises of the school. And almost 100 years ago, you'll see a PSD still existing. Now, if you will look at you know, the different years, you'll wonder how did FSL spread in the Philippines? And there are two routes by which FSL has spread. One is through formal education, and one would be through the churches, the faith-based groups and organizations. ASL, you, you will see the influence of ASL in the language. Um, earlier, Reg talked about the modes of communication and but you see language contact like in Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao, you see sign languages, you see manually coded English, you will see ASL, you see variations of language within our country. And so our research, remember the research that has been talked about earlier with PFT? So we did research, we went to different places where we had old deaf people, and we recorded their signs. And we wanted to find out where the, where the land, please take a look at the dark parts, where you see language contact taking place. So you'll see, this, um, towards, you'll see dark places in Luzon, also in the Visayas. So during the third wave, when the Peace Corps volunteers came, so a good number of them were there coming over here. So for a long time, since 74 to 1989, so they've been coming to the Philippines. Take note of those stars. And that is where they really used ASL. So these places with stars are places with strong ASL influence. So now, so we'd like to show you so in 2001 to 2017, these are the things that have happened. So what, what very important development is the establishment of the Philippine Deaf Resource Center, or PDRC. And this was established um, after the you know, studying at Gallaudet and then coming back to the Philippines. One of the first things that we did was to establish the center. So we have publications, and you probably have seen these publications, these four publications. 
And this is really the first set created by the deaf for the Filipinos. So uh, we've been seeing American books in different stores, but now we have Filipino deaf individuals working on uh, creating these books. So I'm, I think I lectured here in UP in 2008. I remember doing that. And there's a lot of discussion and people were saying there was no FSL and what was just present was ASL. And people were asking, like, what is FSL? And we had to show research, you know, voluminous research to show that it does exist. And so we, they talked about phonology earlier. So we've studied that. We've looked at grammar. We looked at the different levels of language. So we compared ASL and FSL and found that they're different. They're different. And so we compared them, took a look at different um, evidences, looking at structure, looking at history, comparing them, and how language evolved. And so those are typically what we discussed in the lectures. So PDRC was established in 2001, and we had the publications, the four books that I talked about earlier. We attended different discussions about language, uh, participated in different fora. We had the CD so that um, they could be accessed by different people, teachers, for example. And then all of these were all about FSL. And then we have this huge project with the Philippine Federation of the Deaf, which was supported by the Nippon Foundation. Was that, the, was that a five-year project? Yes, yes. So 10 years ago, we had this major project that looked at the history and looked at the different signs in the regions, comparing them, um, looking at language contact. We know that ASL, there was language contact with ASL, but how extensive was that? We, don't, we didn't really know back then. And so we would compare about the influence of ASL in FSL in some places where you would find very similar signs, where you would find the strongest of influence. But you would also find that there are places where the signs were different. And so take a look at the matrix. And so this shows you some of the provinces where there are languages that are quite similar. Or how, how similar are they to English? So take a look at those four regions. Region four. Take a look at the numbers too. Let me move closer. So that photo is like a family picture. So they talk about Woody, who's there with glasses on, seated. He's a famous linguist, sign, la sign linguist, linguist, rather. And then all of them, these people that I'm pointing to, you'd find them in that photo. They were young back then. And so you'd find also a deaf Japanese linguist. Someone from Hong Kong. Wow, we were, we were all young back then. And so we were looking at sign language, looking at this contract, FSL, and what was it about? Where did it come from? What is it closely related to? We suspected that there were like, there were like three developments. And I think Romel was very proud to be part of this study in Region 8. Because in Region 8, Okay, another region that we looked into was Region 5 and Region 4A, where you have Tagalog as the spoken language. And so I felt that it was good to... These places didn't have much, um, you know, language contact. And so... Remember the books that we showed you earlier? 
So there was a lot of research that went into that. We had difficulty really trying to put that thing together. And so this was another huge project by the National Sign Language Committee. And we had this study on the status report on the use of sign language in the Philippines. We also had this training on the use of ELAN, which is a tool for understanding sign language grammar. And these are projects done with the Philippine Federation of the Deaf. And so they underwent training. So we'd like to inform you that from 1993 to 2010, this show you the different papers that have been produced, 53 of them. So 53 lectures and research is done. So before 2000, there were very few, five. But then there was an improvement of eight, and now we have like 40, 40 papers, 40 researches being done. So what were they about? So there, these papers were on different topics, like sign language structure, social linguistics, historical linguistics, Philippine studies per piece field, education, lexicography, gathering data, sign language interpreting, computer applications, computer technology, artificial intelligence, machine translation, translation studies, um, language policy and early childhood development. So the papers that we covered just was quite extensive. Okay. So from then on, we would always hear of ASL. People would put down FSL and say that it is ASL that exists. So there are different views within the deaf community. So you'll be surprised. So for example, you will find deaf Filipinos who say that I use ASL. And those you will find also hearing Filipinos who work with deaf Filipinos who say that they use ASL. And then now you have government agencies who say ASL should be used. And then you have deaf Filipinos who say, I use FSL. So different views within the community now. So you may be wondering why there are some people who don't believe that FSL exists. And so if you're a hearing person, you know, an outsider, you, it's very rare that you will ask a deaf person about what they think. And so what they would do is just think about, you know, their own ideas. But then deaf people say that they do have their own language. Sometimes you also find people who say that FSL doesn't exist because they're not looking at research evidence. And then they would just look at the structure, and then they say, huh, that looks like ASL. <coughs> so people look at vocabulary, they would look at structure, but that's so limited, you know? There are just too many levels by which we should be studying sign language. It's not just vocabulary. There's a lot to study within FSL, concepts. And now, we, you may want to really explore. So like, what are the goals of the community? What's the goal of FSL? Um, and so studies, research has to continue. The, the topics are just too expansive. You, you may want to look at FSL in education. So it's not just structure of language. You need to look at FSL within a context. So there are many views about F, that F in FSL. So it's spoken Filipino? No, FSL is not spoken Filipino. So some have this view that ah, it doesn't exist, you know, it's so similar to ASL. Others, the government for example, will mandate for debit for example, will just say, there's no FSL. I don't know what FSL is. I think it would be very beautiful and very ideal if we use ASL. Tell me if we still have time. And then 
of course, there's this paternalistic view that maybe, uh, you know, there's some people who like to pretend to be assisting and helping the community. But there are many challenges and barriers that continue to face um, us here in the Philippines. Language attitudes, for example, colonial mentality, and we would say that, ah, maybe we should use the language of the USA. So it's really something here, something that is within our belief system. Plus, you have issues in language planning, and this will be discussed later. What do you do now? What does the law say about the use of sign language for the deaf? We need to empower, we need to look at power dynamics also between hearing people and deaf people. And like interpreters, would, would interpreters be imposing on deaf individuals, their clients? And then some deaf individuals would have different ideas about things because of things that have been told them by their interpreters. And then you also have these relations between the government plus the NGOs. And then uh, these credentials, you know, like, you know, let's ask the deaf, the, the deaf, do you have PhDs? And then they were saying, no, we don't have PhDs. But then, do you have MAs, master's degrees? Uh, and probably, because of their lack of advanced degrees and people don't believe them. People with PhD would talk about their language and then if you look at the deaf, but they don't have advanced degrees to even be pushing their own agenda. But these people are deaf. They've been deaf since birth. And then, you know, if you compare that experience as against having a PhD, theirs is a deeper experience. So what do we do now? How do we move away from ASL? So we go back to the Philippine Federation of no, the Philippine Deaf Resource Center in 2001 until 2013, and that we remember this statement that we have: uh, the belief that research-based advocacy for and by the Filipino deaf community is the key to its struggles. And I still believe that that is true. Research is indeed the key. So we continue our re continuing research is needed, like Perky, <laughs> linguistics of Filipino sign language, structure, social linguistics. <coughs> there are yet to be established studies in language dominance. You know, language imperialism, like, and we may want to look at all of these colonized countries where you will find <coughs> ASL. You know. And so you may want to study those areas. Also, in anthropology, you may want to study further Filipino deaf identity and Filipino deaf culture. There are just too many things that we can study. And so thank you very much.